Hi, in the last video we completed our flyback converter PCB design and I'm just about to order all of the components on it but one of the items that we can't order is the flyback transformer itself. Now if you're clever with the tool you can actually get it to uh, design with one of the transformers that you can buy off the shelf but in this particular example we do actually need to wind our own and there's quite a few different approaches to it. Uh, just to remind you what the transformer is that we're trying to wind it's this one that's illustrated in the design here on the PI Expert uh, website. So 204 turns on the primary, and then we've got 51 turns for the bias feedback winding, and then just 10 and 4 turns for the centre tapped secondary. So this is what we're going to be winding today, but before we do that, a quick word from our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. So PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all your project needs. As you know, they offer a wide range of PCB manufacturing capabilities, including very cheap prototype PCBs, production level boards all the way up to 60 layers, and also rigid flex PCBs. They also offer PCB assembly services where you can get your entire PCB assembled with the components onto both sides of the PCB, as well as CNC fabrication. This month, PCBWay are celebrating their ninth anniversary, and so there are some coupons on the promotion page, as well as promotional pricing on a lot of their services here. And there's also a lucky draw, so if you sign in, you can participate in the lucky draw and potentially win one of the prizes. So don't forget to visit pcbway.com. And we've got the materials that we need. Uh, we've got some 38 gauge uh, magnet wire, and I need to just dig out the secondary windings as well. Uh, but I've got this tool here. Now this one isn't really set up for a transformer bobbin of this size. This is quite small, but I have successfully used it in the past by just modifying it with this little thing on the end here. Now this does actually make it uh, a little bit unwieldy to use because uh, when you're turning it here, this does have a tendency to wobble about a little bit, but this is basically just allowing us to stick an M4 bolt through a transformer bobbin like this then we could hold it in place with a couple of nuts and then that actually screws into the, the end of this because this is just a PCB standoff. But that's a nice easy way of just getting this to sit on here. I think ideally, given that I'm never really going to wind anything of this size, I might just chop this off a bit smaller and make something on the 3D printer that holds the bobbins that we're going to use. So I'm going to mount this onto here. First of all, I have marked which one is pin 1 so that we don't start getting confused. Uh, and then we can get winding this transformer. All right, so first of all, we're going to start winding the primary, and it needs to begin on pin 2, and it's important we get this correct, because if we look at the diagram for the transformer, you can see the little dots which indicate the phase of each of the windings. The primary is opposite to the other, so we need to make sure that although we wind in the same direction, the start and ends are connected to the right pins. So... I've got some enamel copper wire here and I've just put a little bit of Teflon tubing over it just to protect it where it goes from the pin down to the layer of the bobbin because there's going to be some secondary windings that run nearby. So we'll put this on pin 2 and just use some tweezers to help get that into place. There we go. We've got the Teflon tubing and then that takes us down to where the uh, bobbin is. Now the idea is that we try and do this without overlapping any of the windings. We want it a nice and flat as far as possible however this is going to be quite unlikely to actually be able to happen because this coil former sorry this coil winder does uh, wobble about all over the place so we'll do our best basically we need to put 204 windings on this in a clockwise direction uh, so let's do our best here so probably lay down like 10 to start with and then we'll just nudge these back to the end but with uh, wire this fine, it's actually going to be quite a difficult job to keep this completely flat without a automatic coil winding machine, which basically feeds the wire in and moves it across in the right direction.
And so that's 204 windings. Finish that on pin one, and then we need to do the bias winding. Next it calls for some transformer tape. Now unfortunately I've not got any that's quite the correct width for this bobbin, so we're going to have to use some that's a little bit thinner. So that's the primary complete. Let's do the bias winding next. So the bias winding starts on pin four, so we'll just wrap this round here. Again, same procedure as before. Try and keep it neat without overlapping. And there we go, 51 windings. It's not exactly neat, but I think it will do the job. So we'll just scrape a bit of the enamel off ready for soldering. And then between these primary layers, it asks for three layers of insulation tape. So let's try and do that now. Next up, we've got the secondaries and this wants to start on pin seven. So let's wrap that round there. And this is just 10 turns around the core, evenly distributed. So that's 10 and it finishes on pin six. And then the final part of the secondary starting on pin five. Reset the counter and this one is just four layers. And this one ends on pin seven. Now that we've wound our transformer, the next thing we need to do is gap the core to set the primary inductance. And if we look at the tool once again, it tells us here that our primary inductance should be about 3,844 when all of the windings are open and we're testing at the switching frequency. So the LCR45, which we've got here from Peak Electronic Design, this one, unfortunately, you can't test at the switching frequency uh, because I think it jumps from 10 kilohertz up to 200 kilohertz, and there's no in between. Uh, the switching frequency for the Link Switch 562 is about 66 kilohertz. Now, I do have an LCR meter on the bench that can do that, but to demonstrate what's actually going on, we can still use this, it, it displays it perfectly. Uh, so we connect up the LCR meter to the primary windings here. And it shows us an inductance of about 200 microhenries or so. Now, if I put the inductor core into the transformer and clamp it together tightly, you can see the inductance shoots up to about 40 millihenries or so. And as we change the gap between these two halves of the transformer, you'll notice the inductance goes up and down. So if I increase the gap, you can see the inductance going down, 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 down. And if I change the gap so it's tighter, the inductance goes up. And basically what we need to do is we need to try and shim the transformer core. So you can use things like paper and introduce it to both sides of the core and keep testing it basically until when you press it tightly together, you get the inductance we're after. Um, so obviously if the inductance is too high, we try and increase the gap. And if the inductance is too low, we try and decrease the gap. And once you've got the right combination of materials, usually paper is a good start. You can also use some tape as well. Uh, obviously nothing magnetic. Uh, but once you get it right, 
then you tightly uh, bind the transformer cores with either the clamp that you can buy for some of these. Unfortunately, this transformer doesn't have that. Uh, so in this case, we'd wrap transformer tape around the outside. And then the final thing to do is to dip the transformer in varnish, which keeps all that in nice solid formation. So as you can see, we're pretty much there, obviously at the wrong frequency here, but 3084 on the LCR meter to the side of the bench, and I've taped the transformer halves together. So the only part remaining now is to dip this transformer in some transformer varnish, let it dry, and then we can use it on our PCB design. So you might be able to see the odd bubble coming out. Interestingly, the instructions say don't vacuum impregnate. So although we've got a vacuum chamber that we could get it into every gap in the transformer, it tells us not to do that. So we'll leave it in here just for the bubbles to dissipate and then we'll leave it to dry. The transformer varnish is now cured. It's the next day and as you can see we've got a bit of a sheen to the transformer. The varnish will help keep it all together, try and reduce vibrations in the windings which might manifest itself as an audible frequency that we can hear at certain switching frequencies. Uh, but the primary thing there is to try and improve the insulation resistance of the windings. So what we'll do just quickly is make sure that this is still assembled properly and nothing changed overnight. So we'll just check the inductance of the primary, which should be about 3844 microhemries. And it's about 3802 microhemries at a test frequency of 15 kilohertz. So slightly off. Um, but that looks like everything is in order. So the transformer is all good. Now we could drop this into the design if we had the PCB and we could test it. But I think what we need to do first of all is just test the insulation resistance between the primary and the secondary because this is our isolation barrier between the mains and our low voltage output. So if we've got a problem in the transformer, a short between the primary and secondary, then that's immediately an electrocution risk. So we should test this. Now ideally we'd have a high potential tester, a high pot tester that could test this at 3000 volts. Unfortunately I don't have one of those but I do have a multifunction tester for electrical installations that will test at 1000 volts uh, and what we will do is test between the primary and the secondary windings and technically there should be basically infinite impedance between those two uh, up until the point where the voltage goes high enough that it flashes over and breaks down the windings. Now we shouldn't do that at a thousand volts, but let's just test it. So yeah, greater than 50 mega ohms. Let's change that to 100 volts. Greater than 100 mega ohms. Then 250 volts. And still good. 500 volts. And that's still good. And our final test voltage on here, 1,000 volts. And there we go. So even at 1,000 volts, we've got um, an impedance bigger than what we can read on this multifunction tester. So I think that points towards this transformer being okay to use in our PCB design. So that's the process of winding a very small flyback transformer. And as you can see, it's a little bit fiddly, but it is achievable. Now, we weren't able to properly achieve some of the specifications with the transformer winding because it suggested we might be able to get that primary done in just three layers, and there's absolutely no way that was happening by hand. If you've got an automatic machine, it will move the wire along as it rotates the transformer. We get very nice uniform layers. A DIY attempt, I think, is never going to be like that unless you spend absolutely ages winding it. But this one should be good enough. We'll be able to test its performance when we connect it up to the flyback driver circuit and see if we actually achieve a decent level of efficiency. But uh, that will be in the next video when we get the PCBs in from our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. So if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.